Morning. So you want to make motion or bring it back in order and then make sure um, there were no decisions made in executive session. I can call the meeting back over. Yep, yep. What's that? You want me to make a motion for that then? Sure. Yep. Make a motion that we move payment from EMS to EMS pay from their emergency management to no, EMS to yeah. yeah from EMS to emergency management. Yep. Second. It's been moved and seconded to move payment from EMS to emergency management. All in favor for signify Ryan. by saying for Ryan. For, for Ryan Murray. For all in favor signify. For all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Gosh. Okay, we're ready for it. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we today? Good, how are you? Wow. Thank you. So my name is Don. I'm here with the Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center. Okay. So you see, they can see right here, don't you? Yes, sir. Okay. So our agency uh, works with uh, children in your community. Uh, <coughs> That uh, um, have experienced child abuse essentially. Um, so, what, how we kind of become involved directly with, with the community when a report of child abuse is made, our agency is then called out. Uh, when a report is made to the law enforcement or DCF, um, that's when we are kind of dispatched out uh, out of our Colby office or our Scott City office, kind of depends. Mm -hmm. um, so, we come out essentially to assess the uh, mental, uh, physical, uh, emotional uh, well-being of the child first and foremost and any fact-finding that comes from that um, is kind of turned over to law enforcement or uh, Department of Children and Families or Family Services. Um, so that's kind of the beginning of our process when we first come out here. Um, so we'll bring out more than likely since you folks are kind of up here a uh, little, little ways from our main office here in Colby or our, up to our office in Scott City or our office in Colby. We'll have one of our, we have uh, five mobile units at our, at our disposal. Uh, three of those mobile units are therapy, two of them are, are interview, um, and one of them is medical. Um, the medical that is there, if, um, if the uh, abuse, possibly anything sexual in nature, it's a, essentially it's a medical exam room on wheels. So we're able to kind of come out um, and do that, uh, do that assessment uh, from our, our, our our medical mobile unit. Um, like I said, the other two units are interview. So when we kind of are dispatched out, law enforcement gives a call, hey, this is what we have going on. We'd like you to interview this child. Um, the interviewer is one is somebody from our office, a uh, very knowledgeable individual who is, who's uh, very skilled in working with children and kind of just the fact finding of, of these, um, these cases. Um, so essentially they're on one side of the, their bus, we call them buses, but they're RVs, one side of the RV with the child, the other side of the RV is uh, law enforcement and DCF or anyone else that might be involved in the case as well. Uh, county attorneys sometimes will sit in, it just kind of depends on, uh, it just depends on how severe the case is, if this is maybe a repeat case, it just kind of depends on what's been going on. Um, that's highly unlikely, but so they're essentially there to kind of oversee the interview as well too, if they have any other, uh, nice shot. If they have any other questions, uh, if they have any other questions, they're able to uh, to relay those to the interviewer. Yeah, they're able to relay those those questions back to the interviewer as the interview is kind of in progress. Um, while that's kind of going on as well, too, an advocate from our office is assigned to the family to seek out any resources if there need be. Say, if there's a financial hardship in the in the forecast because someone's no longer being in the home, uh, what what's available to them? Uh, we stay we stay with the family throughout the court process. Um, as well as um, providing any assistance to the county attorney as well too. Um, for instance, there's an exercise that we do if the child is set to, set, set to testify uh, in court while that everything's kind of going through. We kind of walk through the child through, hey, this is what court's going to look like. You're going to have X amount of people kind of staring at you while you're on the stand. There's going to be a gentleman up here in a row, you know, kind of asking you questions possibly. Um, of course, intimidating for an adult, let alone for uh, a child, especially who's gone through an abuse and... Mm -hmm. You know, usually the with these things, one interview is one interview is what is the, usually the goal for force and foremost. Force first, excuse me. First and foremost, not to re-traumatize a child, yeah. but also to um, not 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 for them not to feel like they're second guessing themselves coming forward. Hey, this is what's happened. 
Yeah. Hey, this is kind of an odd thing that's maybe happened at home or at other at anyone else, and it has happened to more school things like that. Um, and then most importantly, we're there afterward uh, to provide therapy for that child as well too. That's where those uh, our mobile our mobile therapy units kind of come in key mm -hmm. as well too. Since we're not able to have a uh, office in all 34 counties, we're able to come out, see the child. Uh, maybe we're outside of school for 45 minutes of whatever time is allowed. Um, see that child, you know, assess mm -hmm. what's been going on, hopefully curb any uh, behavioral issues that might have came up. And a family says, hey, you know, I think, I think we're going we're gonna to hold off on this. You know, we want uh, our child to maybe do some work, work towards school. That's okay, too. But if down the road, if they call us back up, hey, you know, we're, we're starting to see some, some things that we, we maybe want to see, have reassess or re we're absolutely, we're back out. We're back out to, to see what, uh, what we can do for the families. Um, I've been with the, Fed, with the sorry, with the organizations that I'm in February. <coughs> Um, and I was kind of fortunate. I was there to kind of observe. Um, I'd say it's probably day two being with the organization. Uh, gal comes in, she's in her late 20s, early 20s, sorry. But um, had a two year old with her. And I was like, okay, you know, hey, Don, do you mind? I was in a webinar, I didn't want to be in. It was the uh, typical uh, oh, beginning of, you know, the, uh, the whole, the whole uh, policies of the, of the organization, things like that. The, the fun stuff that every organization has, but hey, do you mind talk speak? Do you know, mind distracting this child? Like, yeah, absolutely. So we're there, we're kind of playing, and, and I'm kind of confused. Like, this is an adult. What, what are we doing here? But I was like, but I, I, day two, just go with it. Uh, coming to find out that child had been in our services prior. Um, as a teenager, she had been known, unfortunately, to uh, fall into bad habits with coping with stress. That day, she came into our office asking for help. Um, luckily, her therapist was still on staff with us, so she was able to kind of sit. And it's kind of just it's the big picture of why we're there, rather than that gal resorting to negative uh, outlets or negative uh, ways to cope with stress. She came in to see us that day, so it's kind of just like the big picture of why we're why we're, why we why we exist, why we're here. And one of her uh, some of the certain verbiage she used with her with her therapist was, "I just I just want to be better for my daughter, this two year old that she now had." So um, it was kind of fairly rewarding to observe that. Um, I've been in some, we'll call them volatile work environments. I don't think I've been around a, a group of folks that are kind of more loving and caring. So I know when they're coming in our office or they're on our bus, they're, they're, in, they're in good hands. So it's, it's been fairly rewarding. Um, so I'd like to make the, the request uh, for uh, 4,000, I believe that was in last year, uh, for our organization. Uh, if you gentlemen have any questions, I'll do the best I can to answer those. Um, it looks like this last year we've serviced eight children out in this area, a total of 68 services as well, too. Um, I don't know if it's on that. It should be on that calendar there. Yeah. Oh, yes. I know there was one that was off last time, but I corrected it. But mm -hmm. just double checking here. So. Still have that fundraiser where they auction off. Isn't that what? Um, we have, uh, as of right now, we have three fundraisers. We have a casino night in Colby, Kansas, uh, which was in March. Uh, we'll have a casino night here in Garden. Ah, words are hard today. Garden City, um, and then we have a uh, Diamonds and Champagne in Scott City. It's another fundraiser that we do. We do. Uh, we have that one will be in October. It's coming up here. Western Auction Realty. I think they've got really involved in this for a few years. Good. I believe so. The name sounds real familiar, so I'm still still learning the ropes and learning from from Kelly. If y'all have ever had the, uh, the pleasure of meeting Kelly, which our founder, our director, so I'm sure. sure. Uh, she's with KBI. She she was with KBI and kind of created this organization. So, well, I appreciate you coming out. And Absolutely, bringing stuff. Yeah, so we we'll do what we can do. Absolutely, well, yeah, we appreciate the situation. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Nice to meet y'all. Y'all have a good rest of your day. You got a packed day, I think it looks like? <laughs> yeah. Right before budgets, right? Uh -huh. Appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful day. You too. So, what was the other organization? This was Western Child Advocacy, the other one was Options. 
Do they all kind of work together, like high plains yes. mental health? I know. Hello. Mm-hmm. Do all of them? I, uh, somewhat. I mean, it's different services. Yeah. But yeah. Jeremy, is that right? Yeah. Come on up, bud. A little early. That's okay. Hi, I'm Brett. <laughs> Brett, Jeremy, nice Good to meet you. Yep. Willie Martinez. Willie. Roger. 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 Good to meet you. And Scott. Scott. Good to meet you. Nice. Okay. Hi, Scott. 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 Hi, all that, but I I know we kind of got on the agenda for kind of the rural opportunity zones, but um, mm-hmm. you guys are probably a little bit familiar with that program. Yeah. Um, right now, our county is um, basically funding that program with uh, city and foundation dollars. Um, we could also be participating with county funding if we wanted to do that so just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that that um, on the the map that uh, I printed out we are one of the few one of the counties that is not um, participating as at a county level so if that comes up in the future and we you know have people that are wanting to participate and and maybe don't have the funding to do so then that that extra funding could help a little bit um, you know being new to the community we may have plenty of funds from the foundations and stuff so if that's the case then um, then we're good to go but if you guys ever need anything from me I just wanted you to have my contact information mm-hmm. my email and my cell phones on there so um, don't necessarily feel like I need to come every month unless you guys need me to for some reason, but um, if there's ever anything that does arise that you guys for sure reach out and, and let me know and I'll make sure to be here. Or I sure wouldn't mind if you'd come every three, four months. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can understand what's going on yeah. Yeah. with yeah. the hospital. And, sure. Uh, on this... This is on like student loans? Yes. So with Rural Opportunity Zone, there's a couple of different programs that it offers. One is for folks that have not lived in the state of Kansas or at least for five years not had income in the state of Kansas. And so when they come into the state in a Rural Opportunity Zone designated county, they can get state tax abatement for five years. So I'm so against this. For the fact that we're trying to bring our youth back uh-huh. that we really like they're good and they were good in our school systems there's good jobs here and they can't get it they can't get the funding because they're coming back to their own community the, 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 we need to fight that the kids can't get the, no you get you can't live in kansas you got to be what coming in for five years or something or like if you were in medical school in Kansas City, Missouri, and then you did your residency, you might be able to as long as you didn't make money in Kansas. Kansas. But we want to try to get our youth back. Well, yeah, everybody generation. does. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's he's saying. It's just yeah. not a fair. It's not fair. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, 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 an ad- it's just an additional program, a way for, um, to bring people into the community. I mean, obviously, we want to bring our own local that's one of the things that we're trying to do is work with the schools to grow our own and you know try to get them to come back to our community but But it's hard for them if they can go somewhere else and get their student loans paid right yeah i think any opportunity that we have to put funding out there to bring our folks back to our community then then we should be trying to do that so there are programs out there that we're working with the kansas hospital association mm-hmm. um i presented at our board a couple of months ago and you know i think it's not one particular program that's going to do it it's yeah. several and whatever you know attracts that one particular person is going right. to 
be what brings them back. But like for instance, um, I'm looking at a physician assistant right now that hasn't ever lived in the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. But you know, if we have a, a Kansas person or a person that's been from our community especially, that's primarily who we would look at. But that's not what I'm getting at. I'm getting at that that person that didn't live in Kansas can get Kansas money. Kansas money to pay off student loans or whatever. Yeah. And the person that grew up here can't get it. Yeah. Well, if a if a student from Kansas, you know, goes to a rural opportunity zone community. So the first thing that I mentioned was state tax abatement. The second thing is um, paying off student loans. So if a student moves into a, an opportunity zone county, then they can get that tax uh, money to pay off their student loans and they would get $3,000 for a year for five years. So Even if they come from this county? Not if they come from this county, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I don't like. Yeah. No, yeah, like you said, it's that's just one program that's out there, and I don't think by participating in it that we're saying that we don't want our local people to come back. Um, and if there's other things that we can put our county dollars towards to try to attract those folks to come back, then by all means, I think we should do that. Some of these things I think we do, uh, you know, just out of the pocket of the the companies that that are here in the community you know they i'm sure there's probably plenty of companies that are putting stipends or paying off student loans you know for some sort of a commitment to to stay for a certain number of years so but yeah just one one additional program that's out there yeah so i think our foundations are pretty involved in it and yeah anything that we can do I think in my opinion to not lose population yep. is a good thing and we had our community health needs assessment here a couple of weeks ago and um, we're one of the counties that have in the last three years actually stayed kind of constant we haven't lost but we haven't really gained but in a rural community nowadays, if you're not losing, then you're probably ahead of the game. Yeah, we have a, a good hospital. Absolutely. Yeah. For a small community, we have a great hospital. Yeah, it is. I agree. And great staff. And I know because I've been in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, you know, working with Great Plains Health Alliance is one of the things that attracted me to the community. Uh, that was the first management company that I worked with in 03 when I started in the healthcare field and Les and I had been visiting about this position when it came open and right. and uh, you know I just made the decision to come back to Kansas and that was it was not a hard decision because that's where my wife and I wanted wanted to be so family yeah yeah we've got three kids three. yeah we have uh Two that are going to be in college this year, and then our our youngest one is a junior. Junior. Yeah. So, yeah, we we're staying in a temporary house over by the post office right now, and we're going to probably be moving this summer into our home. So, you we're bought a home somewhere. We're we're going to move into a house out in the country. We're um, he's not selling it yet, but. Hopefully, when it comes available to buy, we'll have that opportunity. Well, welcome to the community. Yeah, it's good thank to, you. Good to have you. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, so, glad to have you in the community. Yeah, and I definitely, my wife and I, we want to get involved. And my wife's name is Doris, and uh, we'll probably she's already she tends to jump in as quick or quicker than I do sometimes. But she's going to be in the the Little Miss. Uh, she's judging that. Going to be one of the judges. So. She's been a dance instructor and cheer coach and done all that stuff all her life, so that's right up her alley. And so we're excited, and I know this is a nice tight knit community, and yeah. uh, that's one of the things that we've loved about working in healthcare is 
in these rural communities they're really tight knit and easy Being to nosy, get along where'd with. you come from? So um, immediately from Broken Bow, Nebraska, but um, we lived in Satanta, Kansas for eight years. Good. Yeah, and I was the CFO, was my first job in Greeley County. So I went back to school to, to do the administration part. So, yeah. Boy or girl that's a junior? Our daughter that's a junior, yeah, she's uh, the youngest, and then our middle's a daughter, and then our oldest is a boy. Yeah. Where do they go to school? Uh, Hayes and Emporia State. Yeah. Oh, they picked one good one. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? Hayes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Emporia's kind of on the other end of the state. <laughs> I graduated from Hayes uh, in about 1970. Yeah. No, I think that was good. Nice and close. For her to get back or to mom to get over there if they didn't want to so yeah but if there's anything else you guys need my number's on there so reach out anytime and i'll try to just get on the agenda maybe once a quarter then That'd and be great and i even thought you know i don't know how often Mila's coming but i want to try to come when she comes and like every six months or so once a year okay a um, we i usually scheduled um, with the last one, they decided to cut it down, and I was giving you time to get your feet wet before you came. Yeah, so okay. I'll get it on my calendar, and then I'll let you yeah. know. Yeah, sounds good. Works, yeah, just works. shoot me an email or something, whatever. I mean, it's not like you need to come in, but yeah. it's just kind of fun for you us know, to it's know good. what's going on. Absolutely. Keep that communication going, and if there's anything in particular, you know, I can kind of give you guys a synopsis of financially how the hospital's doing, and you know, if there's any trends I'm seeing or anything like that, I'll try to bring some some kind of state or or federal mandates that are coming down the pipe. But how do you pronounce your name? The last name's Klingen Peel. Klingen Peel. Yeah. Okay. Like Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Velcro. <laughs> yeah, that's what you guys are going to be calling me. So. Uh, well. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. Good to meet you. Once all. again, it was very nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks. If we can ever yeah. do sit up for you, let us. Okay, we will do. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Good to meet you. And I've been working out at, at night and seeing your daughter there, so oh, yeah. she's working out hard. <laughs> she, she needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my daughter's going to be cheering at Hayes, so she needs to get in that same program that your daughter's doing. I'm trying to spear her along a little bit. <laughs> See you guys later. See you. You think Dan, we can get Dan or Tom in? I've got them coming. So. Okay, well, you're on the ball. There he is. Hey, come on. What's happening? Not much. I brought back up. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> so. Well, come on up, guys. Don't be shy. I like being shy. Okay. No, we don't. Him on the bed. Yeah. So we got set up with this federal recycling and waste solutions. Mm -hmm. They will pay us ten dollars a ton if we figure out how to load a van trailer. Okay. Right now we got them set up to get us a flatbed out here. Now just so we can get rid of stuff, right. and they won't give us anything to load a flatbed. Can, can they be loaded with one of the pallet dollies or? I think it'd take, what do we got, like an hour and a half to load the truck before they start billing us for it? I think two hours is what, yeah. So what we're, we were considering eventually putting in a loading dock and, yeah. but if we do it outside, we're gonna have to look at a little better forklift. And even if we do it inside, our forklift's getting pretty old. Mm. And I didn't know if there's anything in that recycling money. Budget. Uh, yeah, there's. I don't know exactly what's in there. But okay. Yeah, there's money in there. Nothing's been spent on it. So. And the ten dollars was contingent on like we load it in a loading van. Is that right? Okay. Basically. Yeah, I think more or less eliminating the labor of the driver strapping the load down that way. Okay. 
tuck it into a covered wagon and off they go. Okay. I, I'm guessing is the idea behind that. Yeah. You know, that's why sense. I brought him in because he's done a lot of talking to him, a lot more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> so then we need to bring everything from Bird City over here to load it? Can I send it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I that's assume kind so. kind of what we're thinking, yeah. Oh, man, that wouldn't work very good, would it? Then let's we can set it up where they go. Both places? Both places. Surely they would go 15 miles further, 30 miles around the trip further. But they're going to have to have a forklift and at both locations. What yeah. What type of forklift do they have? They got a they got a nice forklift. I don't know if it. Yeah, we got a we got a real nice one. I think. I don't know if would you it need would, a loading uh, dock though. Pardon? Would you need a loading dock too? Then? I imagine, yeah. Unless you, uh, I know we'd lift it up and set it in there, and then if we had some way to scoot it back, um, with a pallet jack or I don't know. But it's. I've been loading stuff with a pallet jack out of some of them vans, and we'll fit them floors or anything bad. Yeah. So it's and that's assuming it's park level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And pallet jacks will work you. Yeah. And what we were thinking if we build a loading dock outside, we're going to have to have something better. Yeah. Our forklift, once it goes out the door, it's stuck. Yeah, they're hard oh, rubber we, tires. Do you have anything in the recycling? Yeah, I, I don't know whether I can find out bombs and all today. Okay. Whatever we received is still in there. Okay. From some of the notes. Yeah. Because, like, so as we had a flatbed trailer over there. We could load stuff on a flatbed and bring it over here and load it. Yeah. Wouldn't have to have to. You know what I'm saying? We just didn't get into it with them. Will you go from here to there? Right. You know, half loaded or whatever. Yeah, because it, it, it just seems like it'd be not make a lot of sense to load it over there and then bring it here and unload it and reload it. Will they take uh, anything else too? I knew that question was going to come up. I'm I didn't want to answer it. But. I think they're a full I think service. They'll take everything. Really? I think yeah. so. So we could essentially continue the recycling. Possibly. Okay. We're kind of in the in the middle of dealing with them. We we kind of have to have an account set up before they can say, "Yeah, we can do this for you," or "We can't." I suppose it's just the nature of the business, but. Mm -hmm. But we should have some answers on those kind of questions in the next couple of days. Wow. Because uh, they're wanting to know, like, per annum tonnages and that kind of stuff, so which yeah. we should have that information. That'll save the landfill a lot. I mean, over the years, that's yeah. a huge. But, yeah, buyer for all recyclables. Like you said, for now we just ordered the flatbed to get some get, get stuff it started, moving, and we then we can work on the rest. Yeah, we'll I agree. Well, thank yeah. you guys. That's well, pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. We're way over over there. Yeah. Last time I talked to Frank, he said they had like 20 bales. Yeah. So we figured worst case we could figure find the trailer <coughs> and over and pick them up or pick up part what of them. What are those bales weigh? About between 900 and 1,000 pounds each. So two bales would be ten bucks if that's the case. Give pretty take, close. Pretty, pretty close. close if not. Okay. If worse comes to worse, I could probably get a trailer to bring it here. Okay. But then, <clears throat> but then on you know unloading it is another thing too. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's eighteen thousand in recycle reimbursement, but I think that other money I can't remember how much that was when they sold it. What the checks that we got from from the recycling that went out of business. Right. I wonder if could, they're not in another spot. Could we put gone, forks on a loader yeah, for now? Where it's at, so. Pardon? Could we put forks on a, a loader for now? We've got a skid steer yeah. with forks, but... Uh, that would be better than the loader. I mean, As far as loading an open trailer, yeah, but we're not going to take that thing into a covered wagon. Right. I, agree. <laughs> I, don't know what the, I don't know what that skid steer weighs. I don't know. That's kind of what we're looking at. I suggested the city council that we either look at building a loading dock outside or putting a small door in our recycle center, dig down outside where they can back up and we can just go right out of the recycle center and the truck, but up here. So 
but all that's going to take money. So that's why I was wondering well, if we have recycled money. I thought money we, we got like 32000 We, we do have didn't some. We? From the sale of the stuff over in Colby? I thought it was more than that, but Trissa, she thought it was 24000 Well, we, how much did we spend on the on those compactors? Uh, 1500 was it? Sure. <laughs> yeah, something like that. How much? 1500 or so. For all of them? Yeah, he got us a real good deal. Oh. Yeah. And we don't need an answer today. We're just putting the bug out there that this is where we're going. Well, what about somebody. those uh, mobile uh, ramps? I don't know. I don't know anything about them. We had, one, we had one at the Colby plant that you can just, this iron one you just drive up at. Hmm. The only thing there is I think you have to have concrete to set it on. There's at least 18,000 there. <laughs> okay. I know there could be more. I don't. Yeah. We, like I said, we don't need an answer back. right this moment, but we're, we could have put that money in. Just trying to start stuff. planning stuff so we can figure out where we're going. Okay. If you want reimbursed. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> hey, that be to stay. I'm glad to see you guys. The way he work. talked, it was about ten, $10 dollars a ton right now, and that's on the low end. Right. So. Yeah, dip in the market. Everything's low right now. But, Yeah, that's, the that's good that you guys are working hard on that because, right, man, yeah. that's, that's a nightmare. But, but yeah, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But that's a general I thought maybe it would work. I don't know if it's going to We haven't talked to them about driving over okay. there. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, uh, we've just been trying to get a truck out here. So. Yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't mind driving that much further, but loading it would be the... Yeah. Well, it says in 21 we got $94,000. In 22 it says we have 18000 but I think I, we had Don put Transfer. that in a separate fund or a separate place. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, if I, if I remember right, we wanted to put it aside so that it would be for recycling. Yeah, we'll and if, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we still have some more money coming in from it. Whenever they completely dissolve, I don't know. It wouldn't be very much more, but because I mean, we have the only thing we purchased is the those bailers. Yeah, sure. That's fifteen hundred. So I'm pretty, pretty sure we put that in and made its own account for that. Okay, so look, we'll piece. get we'll try to get on top of what we really have for you guys. That will and we'll try to figure out what we want to do as far as yeah. What we, do you ask for? Uh, you want know, like three estimates? For a, a forklift, yeah. What, what do you you think? It's Anybody low? Our purchase agreement. Yeah. Okay. Or our purchasing policy. Yeah. You think it'd be better to lease one? Maybe. I know we we did that with Yost with the skid steers back in '13. But I didn't know. I mean, that cuts your maintenance way down too. I don't know. There's there's options. It's just good that there's a light at the end of the tunnel here, guys. <laughs> so it's exciting. That's all we really had. Yep. Right now. Hey. So we'll get more together and figure out like what a loading dock's gonna cost or whatever we gotta do to. If you need forward. cleats of your sand, I'll give you all you need. <laughs> 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 so. I'll give this to you. Justin signed these papers. How yeah. do you fill them up to get the truck out here? So. Okay. That's just a copy of what you signed. Basically. Okay. Yeah, I so you've got a truck downstairs. Possibly tomorrow. Possibly tomorrow, yeah. Is it a flatbed or uh -huh. Yeah, an open flatbed, yeah. That way we can at least get rid of some stuff. So we, we just found that out like 30 minutes ago. So <laughs> Could it's, you find out for me when they'll be able to send one over there? Yeah, we yeah, can we, ask. We can make phone calls. And yeah, because I got this guy going outside right now. <laughs> no. But no. What do you I'm have? Just, how many bales? You have 20 some bales? And see, they want a full load before they'll bring a truck out. And how many is on their load? They want 20 tons minimum. So you're so 40, 40 bales, bales 40. give or take. Well, they could take probably 20 
20 from there and 20 from here. Well, yeah. Now we could probably even see where we're at, maybe split the truck up tomorrow. I just don't know if... Yeah, well, we, they don't know ahead of time that they're driving over there. I don't know if they will. Right. Yeah, don't you? Because it sounds like it's one of the I think that would have to be in that need a truck and agreement. They truck out. It's not and how many do you truck. have? We have, we have close to 65. 65. Yeah. So that, that would be yeah. close to two trucks. Yeah. 20, yeah. 20 at each would cut yeah. us down to 45, which would be nice if for we, space. If we can get them to uh, come we can right get back. Them, we can call right back and mm -hmm. see when they can send the next truck out. Go from there. Wow. So we'll at least get rid of the cardboard and then maybe we can get some planned where we can start getting reimbursed. And then we'll see how much more we'll start taking. We don't want to start taking any, but I'm sure you guys want us to. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't well, hey make guys. a whole lot of sense. Hey, thanks, thanks for time. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming in early. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll see you down. Thanks. You love what you guys are doing on the city. You bet. Parks are the great city. Thank you. You get a question. You can Come on up, Tom. Okay, or you can stay there, whatever you take, want to do. Take a break or you're on. No, no, we're fine. I just wanted to give you guys an update on, on what's going on on my project for okay. getting our uh, building building and all. Right right now, well, the build the building, the bid was sixty one thousand one hundred. The uh, donor signed seven hundred. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have 15 donors at $2,500 a piece. Wow. Dane Hansen Foundation gave us 20,000. Our local foundation, five. We have one donor that gave a thousand. The only two businesses that I went to were grain dealers, mm -hmm. Schooler, and Viterra. Viterra is Gavilon. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and so they. Uh, you can see what they gave. So mm -hmm. right now I have 67500 which you can see is over the 61800 mm -hmm. What I'm here today to ask you if I could get your permission, since, since what we're trying to do is get good storage for those folks, I would like to have that van removed down there and put a container in. A container costs seventy five hundred dollars for the double doors. That way, they can get in on both ends, and uh, we would do away with that van that's sitting down there that, that looks so bad. Uh, a ride came in that van, and that's why they have it. It's got a it's got a couple of skylights in it okay. which leak water. Mm -hmm. What they've put in there has been their games. And this way, with a, with a container, it'll set directly on the ground. It'll have doors on both ends so they can put their games right. in there and maybe even some of their, their rides, you know, the little kitty car rides mm -hmm. or something like that. But anyway, I'm asking your permission to go ahead and keep getting, collecting money. I've, uh, with, with that 7,500 and with the 67,500, I need eighteen hundred more dollars. Well, I've got a check coming in after wheat harvest for twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. and I've got about three other people that are still saying that they are they're interested in giving. So I would be able to cover the amount very easily. Okay. But I, I need I would I wanted to come to ask you if if putting a container down there is is okay with you. Basically what it'll mean is that You'll have a building right. that you own, and you'll have a container that you own. If yeah. if if things would ever look better in a van, would oh I, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> the van, of course, they have to lift stuff up in, and they can only get in one end. So if they have something up at the front, they need to get to. They got to dig through it. It it would just make things a lot handier. But I wanted to come to you to make sure that. That's acceptable. Where are you going with the van? Actually, uh, Fromholtz said that he would buy it from us for iron. Uh, the The tires are pretty much shot. All the brake lines have rotted out. Mm -hmm. uh, it leaks up above, so it, it's basically worthless. Uh, 
I just wanted to hurry and get it out of there. Well, that's <laughs> you're right. But Fromholz, I asked him, I said, would you be interested in a van? He said, yes, I'll buy it. I'll buy it from you. 1500 <laughs> now that I don't, well, that's where you did, right there. I I see, yeah. <laughs> but is, it, is that in the city? No, it's no, in no, it's it's county. Okay. Yes. Does the county have? It's at the fairgrounds. Okay. But, yeah. Well, does the county have anything that says? No. Well, I like I know in Bird City those containers have got to be paid. Oh, uh, yes, there is something in the city limits. You cannot put a container in the city limits unless you build a structure around it to hide it, to cover okay. it. Because the museum wanted to put one up there for storage, okay. and that was the thing is you can put a container there, but you, you've got to build a covering to, to basically hide it. But down there, I don't, I don't believe there's any regulations. Uh, uh, they have one out at the gun. Well, yes, they? I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, yeah, they did away with their van out there yeah. and, and went with a container. So These, that's, that's the thing was, it's in the county, so they could do yeah, it. It's yeah. actually city. Is that city? It comes out that, the that's city. probably city, but it's outside of the city limits. Yeah. I think they did a whatever to let it, what, right. put it out there. What Gary Hill told me, and he's the one that has these containers, uh, he said, basically, they're brand new. They're, they're building them over in China. They're loading them with stuff. Mm -hmm. They're shipping them over, and they don't want them back. It costs them more to ship an empty container back. Somebody so said we, they have beautiful floors in them. They do. We have, we have one out at the farm that we use. Beautiful wooden floor. It's got the vents in it, so you don't have any condensation. There's no mice get in it. There's no rain or... You know, maybe a little bit of dust, something like that. But it's a, and, and it's a secure. If you want to put locks on each end, you, wow. nobody's going to get into it. But anyway, I just wanted to update you on how we're doing here, fundraising, and to ask if if getting a container and getting rid of that van is okay with you. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think so. I would, and I would, I would make a motion, motion so it's in the minutes in 30 years. There's no question about why that ended up. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, I make a motion. <laughs> okay. Okay. We never did find out. The amusement authority, surely there's an agreement somewhere they lease the ground that they're on. Is this container not going to be on that ground? Well, it'll... It'll be right outside the fence. Where, where the van is setting now, the fence goes down along this way and then heads north. So you don't think it's inside the... Well, I think this is going to be county... Well, it'll still, it'll still be on county ground. I mean, the, the actual container, is the county going to own that or is it... Going to be well, it, it'll be just like the building. So it'll be... Yeah, that's what you need the motion. So... So it'll it'll set along that fence there because it's nice and long. Problem with it. I just thought maybe clarification. The rides yeah. are they have a lease to have those rides there. Hmm. But this will be outside that ground. Plus, it's more permanent than the trailer is too. So I just think it'd be nicer to have a motion that way. It's yeah. someone I comes back, they can see why. I moved it to this amusement authority. Is that what we're going to say it is? Uh, well, it's for the amusement authority. That the amusement authority can place a 